Welcome to IDB. Ladies and gentlemen, the iPhone 10 has launched and with it are an entirely new control system based on gestures instead of those hardware buttons like the home button that was removed. So we're going to walk through all of the gestures on the iPhone 10 starting with Control Center, which is no longer accessed by swiping up from the bottom. Instead, you can access it from that top right hand ear, as they've been kind of being called. You can also pull down just a little bit to glance at information like if you're connected to uh, what carrier and how much battery life you have remaining. Now while that right ear is kind of delegated to control center, the entire rest of the top bar is left for notifications. So if you pull down on the left ear or in the center, literally anywhere but the right ear, you'll easily access your notifications and your lock screen. Accessing widgets is largely unchanged. You can simply swipe to the left of your first home screen to access widget view, or you can swipe down from the top of the phone where notifications are, and then swipe to the left. That applies to the lock screen as well since they're pretty much one and the same on that cover sheet. The most basic control that you're going to have to know on the iPhone 10, and if you have an iPhone 10, you probably already do know, that's how you access the home screen. And you do so by simply flicking up, swiping up from the bottom of the phone. And now that works whether you're on the home screen, whether you're in an app, or you're on your lock screen. That's simply just how you always get back to your home screen. It's also very similar to how you access the app switcher. You simply move halfway up and hold, just pause for a moment, and the app switcher will open. In use, the pause can be a little bit annoying, so there is kind of a quick shortcut, and that is by swiping up from the corner at a roughly 45 degree angle. When you swipe up from the corner, you can see how much faster it is to access the app switcher than swiping up directly from the center and pausing. The new iPhone 10 also has two little shortcuts on the lock screen or cover sheet of your phone. One is for the flashlight and the other is for the camera. Now you simply can't tap these because if you just tap them, they could be inadvertently triggered. So instead they require a 3D touch or a deep press to enable them. You feel a little touch of the haptic feedback as you do so. Of course, for the camera, you can still swipe from the right to the left to enable or just 3D touch on that camera icon. Many people are familiar with the Siri Spotlight Search. It's extremely useful and even more so in iOS 11 as they added web and other searches to Siri Search. So to access this quickly, especially while you are in an app, you can kind of use a combination of two gestures. One is simply the swipe up, which is your home screen, home button, and then the other one is a swipe down, which is accessing spotlight search. And when you combine those together into one fluid motion, you go up, lift just a second, and then pull back down. All together, you end up with accessing Siri spotlight search pretty much seamlessly from within an app. Of course, this won't work if, if you're in a folder, so just go back into that folder view. On previous iPhones, you could use a 3D touch gesture from the left to kind of swipe all the way from the left to the right to access the previous application. So I've gone ahead and opened several applications and I can swipe across the bottom now, both from left to right as well as right to left to access any of my recent applications. It's really handy to jump back and forth between recent ones compared to having to open up the app switcher. You can even be a little bit liberal with it and actually kind of swipe up in a more of an arc. And even that arc will work as you're using your thumb because it's kind of hard to keep your thumb straight across. So I'm glad that they added this ability to be a little lenient with your swipes going from left to right or right to left. On the iPhone 10, you no longer have that touch sensitive touch ID ring to access reachability. This is a way to easily access what's at the top of your phone so you don't have to kind of readjust your hands. Instead, you just simply swipe down on the bottom little bar of your phone. Just a small little swipe and it'll lower your screen, making it within reach. You do have to enable it though by going into settings, accessibility, and under interaction, toggling on reachability. Once that's on, just a simple swipe down on the little bar and it'll go down. And if you even pause a second, it'll automatically readjust itself if you don't interact with your phone. When you go into the app switcher, there are two separate ways that you can kill or force quit applications. If you just try to swipe up on one, it's not gonna work. It's kind of awkward. It jumps you either to your home screen or into that app. It's not nice. But if you do just hold onto the application itself, you can tap on the little minus sign in the top left-hand corner. Though that can be a little bit awkward to do. So instead, you can simply hold onto the application and then swipe up. Now, yes, this is a little bit more complicated than it has been in the past, but it's not something you should really be doing regularly. So it makes sense they've added kind of an extra step to 
make it a little bit more difficult to people just to do this all the time because it really doesn't add too many benefits unless an application is acting up. Many people are familiar with the accessibility shortcut. You could do this by triple tapping the home button and do fun things like turn on the smart invert colors, which is essentially a dark mode for your iPhone. On the iPhone 10, however, without that home button, you instead will triple click the side button or what used to be the lock button. So a triple click there and I have it set to smart invert colors and it'll do just that. You can opt to have multiple features enabled. So when you triple click it, it'll ask what exactly you want to do. But if you want just a quick and easy way to enable dark mode or any of the other accessibility options, this is a great way to do it. If you are still pining for a home button, there's definitely a way to do it. iOS has had the ability for some time now to add a virtual home button onto your phone. For instance, if your hardware button stopped working. Well, it's kind of useful here in the iPhone 10 because you can use it to replicate that physical home button. You can even have it just with one tap act as a home button instead of enabling this menu. You have other options you can do with it. You can even double click it to go into the app switcher. Go into accessibility inside of settings and then find assistive touch. When you have this turned on, you have these options for clicking or tapping on the home button. So now instead of opening a menu, just tapping on that button will act just like a home button and take you to the home screen. Even works on the lock screen of your phone. Tap it and as long as you're validated through face ID, you're in. And again, double clicking can even take you to the app switcher. The last few gestures we want to look at involve moving icons on your home screen. iOS 11 allows you to move multiple icons at once, which is really handy when you're trying to organize your phone. Simply enter your wiggle mode by holding onto an icon, drag it, and then tap as many other icons as you'd like. It'll tell you how many you have, find where you want them to go, and release. Now, while this is available for all other iPhones and iPads, that's not specifically new. That's just something we wanted to make sure you were aware of that you still could do on the iPhone 10. But when you are in wiggle mode, you have two options to exit because in the past you would just press your home button. Well, now there's a done button in the top right hand corner, or you can just swipe up from the bottom doing the home gesture. So again, just swipe up from the bottom and you've exit wiggle or edit mode. An alternative, you can press on that done button in the top right hand corner. Just enter wiggle mode. Once you're finished changing your icon, just go ahead and tap on done. So I think the gesture is a little bit more seamless. So there you have it, pretty much any gesture you will need on your new iPhone 10. If you have any other quick tips, let us know down below in the comments. Go ahead and subscribe. And until next time, this is Andrew for IDB.